let's discuss Sympathy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Hopefully you've already read the poem. Why does a cage bird sing? What kind of song is this bird singing? Normally birds sing happy songs, right? Is this a happy song? No. If you look at lines 18 through 20, you see it's not a song of joy or glee. It's a prayer, a plea to heaven. So that's my textual evidence when I say that it's not a happy song. Well, why is the bird not happy? What is a bird designed to do? It's designed to fly, and can it fly in a cage? No. It doesn't matter how big the cage is or how fancy the cage is, it's still a cage. Now, Dunbar's parents were freed slaves. That's important to know. His parents were once slaves, and maybe his grandparents were too. So when he writes, I know why the cage bird sings, he's not just talking about birds. You see, this is an extended metaphor. Jot that down, put it in your brain. An extended metaphor. The bird and the cage and the suffering represent something else. It could be any animal in a cage. A tiger pacing back and forth at the zoo. One of those orca whales stuck in a little swimming pool. This metaphor relates to those animals just as much as it does to a bird in a cage. For Dunbar, though, this metaphor goes further than just animals in a cage. He's talking about the African-American experience in the mid to late 1800s, and, and so that's even beyond just slavery. He died in 1906, so he's talking about his parents, he's talking about his condition, he's talking about the plight of the slaves of the past and the former slaves of the, his present, and we can extend it to apply to the oppression of any minority group in our present. That's the beauty of a great poem. You can relate to it. And you can too, can't you? It's April of 2020. And for the last month and for the next month, we're all what? We're like that bird. March 19th was the first day of spring. We see the bright sun and feel the wind blowing, like in the poem, lines two and three. The flowers blooming and the sweet smell of the outdoors, lines six and seven. But we can't go out and enjoy it. We're staying at home and staying safe, left to gaze out the window and into our screens, our computer screens and our phone screens, trying to reach out to our friends, but ultimately returning to our perch. That's line 10. I'm returning to my lazy boy and watching Netflix, searching for something to free us from this quarantine. But now here we are, locked up in our rooms, wanting to be free. Henry David Thoreau was a great American writer who was put in jail once for not paying his taxes. And he said, you can imprison my body, but not my mind. So, as you read the poem and answer the questions, think about how Dunbar describes the plight and feelings of the bird and how it can relate to more than just a bird in a cage. There are some archaic words in the poem, some old words that are important to your understanding of it. Uh, there's a line that says, For he must fly back to his perch and cling when he fain would be on the bow a swing. So, I know there's a question about the word fain. I'm not going to directly define it for you here. I mean, you could go look it up. But, use your context clues. What is the bird doing? He's trying to get out of the cage. He's banging up against the bars, but he can't get out, so he has to go back to his perch to do what? To cling. He clings to his perch. Doesn't sit there. He's not resting there. He's clinging there. Like if you were fall off a boat and they throw you a rope and you cling to that rope. So think about the connotations of the word cling. Is this something positive? Does he want to go back to the porch? To the perch? No. What does he want? Well, he wants to be out on a bough. Well, what's that? It's a tree limb. It's a, you know the nursery rhyme, when the bough breaks, the cradle will fall. It's a tree limb. So he, wants to, <clears throat> he has to go back and sit on the perch when he would fain go sit in a tree outside. So what does fain mean? Look at your answer choices in there and see which one fits in there. You know, 
I would fain be taking a nap right now. I would fain be out hiking right now rather than being locked up in here. So what can you replace that word fain with that makes sense in modern language? And question five asks, how does stanza one contribute to the development of the poem's theme? Well, first, you have to know what the theme is. And that goes back to question one. So if you answered that right, then the other part should be easier. So you know what the theme is in regard to freedom, right? The theme has up to do with freedom. How does the first stanza develop that idea? When Dunbar is describing how nice it is outside, how does that make it worse for the bird? Would the bird feel differently if it was raining outside? If it was storming outside? Or would the bird still want to be free? That's just an extra question. But in the first stanza, when he describes how pretty it is outside, how does that help develop the theme in regard to freedom? All right, give it a shot. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll answer them for you. Thanks so much.